All right, let's get started. So yeah, I'll make a quick uh, introduction here um, to the webinar. Um, of course, uh, this is next in our series of with uh, LG Electronics. Uh, Matt Bird and Jim Brown are going to present today. Um, as usual, we have the uh, getting started. Um, we're going to be uploading data sheets and handouts into the handouts tab uh, as we go. Um, they'll be there. Um, and of course, as usual, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Please feel free to ask questions anytime. <clears throat> and um, if, if we can, we'll even uh, answer them uh, on the fly, but we'll definitely get to, to, to them at the end. And then uh, finally, when everything's done, we will uh, email everybody recording. Uh, I'm Stuart Fox. Um, I head up the Green Tech Renewables Design Services. Um, we are a services team with Inside Green Tech, um, and we offer design services to any Green Tech customer. Um, we can handle pretty much any type of engineering uh, anywhere in the United States. Uh, and if you're a Green Tech customer, you have access to all these services. And of course, Green Tech Renewables is the nation's leading renewables provider and distributor um, committed to providing customers with exceptional service and top tier products um, like LG from prominent renewable energy manufacturers. Um, Green Tech is a nationwide distribution network of very uh, highly evolved distribution centers for um, their specific geographic areas. Um, please check them out if you don't if you don't know of them. Um, we've got lots of great services and products, and of course we strive to be the most trusted distributor in the in the industry. Um, our core values, of course, are service, integrity, and reliability. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Matt and Jim. And um, again, feel free to ask questions as you go. Uh, let's get started. Hey, Stuart, thank you. Good day to everyone, depending on where you're at in the country. It's afternoon over here on the East Coast, and Matt's not far behind me in the middle of the country. So welcome. Thank you for making time in your day to join us for this uh, Green Tech-sponsored LG Electronics ESS webinar. Um, as Stuart said, there are some handouts that will show up in the tab. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll get to those if, if and when we can. Um, you will have contact information for both of us as well, so you can feel free to reach out directly. I am seeing a couple of comments in the chat about no audio. Uh, right now, our tests prior to launch look good. Uh, we've got uh, good audio that we can see here between the presenters as well. So take a close look at your system. Make sure you're not... Um, Make sure your systems are enabled on your side, your speakers are enabled. Okay, good stuff. I'm hearing a lot of good feedback here on the audio. So again, welcome. LG8, uh, LG Home 8, Residential Energy Storage System. We're gonna talk to you about more power, more energy today. Uh, as Stuart introduced me, I am Jim Brown. I've been with LG Electronics for three years now, started out in the LG solar business, but I go back about 14 years in solar. It's been a heck of a journey, a lot of fun actually cut my teeth in the manufacturing sector, providing uh, automation solutions to solar module manufacturers. Uh, I came back to LG Electronics in June of 2022 to focus on this residential energy storage product specifically, and I work out of South Central Pennsylvania. I am really pleased to be joined by my colleague, Matt Burt. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, and then we're gonna work together here to present some information for you today. Oh, thanks, Jim. Appreciate that very much. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So uh, similar to Jim, I've been uh, working in solar, uh, you know, pretty much since 20, uh, 2019. Uh, since 2017, I've been working in energy storage, uh, solar, um, troubleshooting, uh, help folks with design, uh, those kinds of things. So it's been a great ride. I uh, joined uh, LG last summer and um, having a great time and uh, looking forward to helping you folks as well. Okay, thanks, Matt. Well, let's kick this off with a quick poll question. 
uh, as Matt and I shared, we're with LG Electronics for a short period of time here in the residential energy storage sector. How about you guys? How many years have you been installing solar? Uh, at, sorry, installing residential solar and storage. See if that poll question comes up here. There we go. There's the poll question. You'll see it on your sidebar. Give you just a minute to chime in. Nice. Nice, a fair amount of tenure in this space, solar and storage in the residential market. Excellent. Got a few more answers coming in. Yeah, looking good. Hey, there's also, you know what? The newcomers are coming along. Some are less than a year here. That's good. That's good. Storage is an exciting space. We're going to share a little bit of information to move us along. I think all of you that are attending the webinar here can actually see the responses. So I won't read them off to you. But uh, the vast majority are three years or more in the residential solar and storage space. That's excellent. Love the experience, uh, but we also love working with those who are cutting their teeth as well. Very good. Let's move along. Thank you for your responses. Appreciate that. So there's a couple of data points out there that help inform, you know, why are we in this space? Why is this space important? Energy Sage is just one such data point, And I wanted to share with you here an interesting uh, uh, bit of data from their second half of 2022 market survey. One point that really jumps out at us here is why homeowners uh, engage with residential energy storage is that self-supply component. You can see they're pretty consistent responses from the second half of 2021 through the first half of 2023 in terms of backup power. I mean, that's what we think of when we think of batteries, emergency energy if the power goes out. But it's an interesting increase in the self-supply. And I don't think anybody on this call is unfamiliar with the changes in the, in the market and the policy uh, and the utility behaviors and so on that are driving homeowners to be more and more energy independent and more and more energy secure. And this one data point from Energy Sage certainly reinforces that homeowners are looking for uh, greater sources of energy self-supply. I had the opportunity to, to work in the North Carolina, North Carolina market recently, again, with Green Tech Renewables and specifically in North Carolina. But, you know, the use case for energy storage is strong. And this is one such example from the Carolinas. And me being an East Coast guy, I'm going to look at this particular market to share with you any storm susceptible area certainly has issues with grid stability, grid reliability, power outages that are unpredictable and uh, of varying duration. So, uh, power outages are certainly a strong use case. And then those of our friends on the West Coast, you're, you're very familiar with NEM3 and what's happened, happened with rates and time of use. Uh, and in fact, Duke Energy in North Carolina is, is now implementing as of October 1st, some time of use <clears throat> rates as well. And they're actually incentivizing homeowners now to embark on solar and storage as well as adding storage to existing solar. And that's where the PowerPair Solar and the PowerPair program comes to life in that North Carolina market. So it just underpins the fact that the use case for energy storage is extremely strong using the Carolinas just as one use case uh, to, you know, to reinforce that point. Another data point that really is interesting to us, the Wood Mackenzie, some of you that have been around, you know, if we look at that first poll, of how many people have been in the industry for a number of years, uh, Green Tech Media became Wood McKenzie. They, they informed the market with a lot of data, a lot of market research, and it's just another data point that reinforces residential energy storage is here and it's growing. You're seeing data on the screen, Q1 of 2022 and Q1 of 2023 and the year-on-year -year changes in those respective quarters. The, <clears throat> according to WoodMac, the top 10 storage markets in the country are listed there on the right-hand side. You can see who the leading players are, but the growth in that storage sector is promising and highly encouraging for all of us. Energy storage is on the rise, without a doubt. Here's another look at some WoodMac data, again, informing the case for energy storage. It's a place to be. <clears throat> we love it when curves increase to the right, no doubt. Uh, as you can see here, dating back to Q1 of 2021, uh, 
and through Q1 of 2023, you can see increases. There is a slight adjustment here in Q1 of 2023. I think all of us can probably speculate why that's the case. Those that have been in solar for a long time certainly are familiar with the seasonality of solar, particularly that Q4 to Q1 change. But nevertheless, still strong case for energy storage. The growth in the market, both in megawatts and megawatt hours, is real clear here. And once again, Woodmac ranks the, uh, the top 10 states for storage here on the right-hand side in the legend. So it's interesting to watch the trend of storage. It's also interesting that Woodmac looks ahead through 2027, once again, the columns increasing to the right, that's the business that we wanna see. That's the, the inspiration for all of us to get our arms around this energy storage space, embrace the, the right products for the right applications with the right manufacturing partners so you can be successful in your business. Price is always part of the conversation. It happens in solar, it happens in all components of this solar and storage industry. But uh, if we look at a Energy Sage data point on a national level, uh, again, this comes from their Marketplace Intel report through the first half of 2023. Nationwide, uh, there has been increasing trend in storage prices. <clears throat> That's good for your business. However, on a state level, you know, there's a little bit of more interrogation that's required here to see what's going on state by state. But um, for these top 10 storage markets, the pricing was flat or maybe slightly declining in six out of 10 of these markets. The point is that <clears throat> with the increasing interest in and demand for energy storage, the pricing appears to be durable, which again, bodes well for your business in installing residential energy storage. Got another poll question here. Let's just see where you're going today with your residential energy storage product. Um, we list just a few brands here. You'll recognize all of them, of course. So uh, give us your answers there. Let's see what you got. All right, we've got some good answers coming in. Thank you for your responses. <clears throat> Looking good. Yep, and all, altogether, uh, honestly, not a big surprise. There's a lot of good choices out there in the energy storage space. Matt and I are gonna take some time through the rest of our uh, our webinar here together to make the case for the LG Electronics Home 8. <clears throat> some key features that make your life easier, that make the homeowner's life easier, and give you good reasons why we should be working together. Yeah, it looks good. Now we've got about half of our answers in, looking good. Again, kind of what we expected. Really appreciate it. Thanks for those answers. <clears throat> Excuse me. So LG Electronics actually launched a complete residential energy storage system in Europe in 2016. Now the company's had good success with that product in Europe. It was retooled for the U.S. electrical grid and brought to market in May last year when the beta install started. And for those that enjoyed, uh, wow, wow that show in Anaheim last year, uh, at that time, the largest RE plus, or you know, for those who refused to let go of history, the uh, SPI show, huge show. We had our official launch at that show and anybody that made it to Vegas this year, wow, another record in the books for sure. But the LG Homemade has been on the market here in the US since May of last year. <clears throat> we have coverage across the country with our team and, and lots of systems deployed to date. So it's not a new product. Uh, the Home 8 is just a new product to the U.S. market. A few bullet points here, but I want to highlight why we're talking today. The LG Home 8 brings you more power and more energy. This is an AC coupled system. Makes it very easy to include with solar and even easier to add to existing solar. With 7.5 kVA AC continuous output, the Home 8 has more power than most of your other single unit solutions out there on the market. <clears throat> the Home 8 will peak at 9 kVA for 10 seconds and provides 14.4 kilowatt hours of usable energy. And you can use all of it. Um, LG builds in a hard floor in this particular product with 15.8 kilowatt hours of total energy. And Matt's going to speak to that a little bit later in our talk. 10-year warranty doesn't come as a surprise and LG backs, uh, you know, the battery degradation with 70% usable energy. 
uh, in year 10. We certainly have VPP enablement. Uh, there's a monitoring experience for the homeowner as well as for the installer, and we'll touch on those a little bit later. One of the most welcome attributes of the Home 8 is its aesthetics and its slim profile. More power, more energy in a smaller space. Energy density, that's what the homeowners are looking for. That's what they're after. You can see the unit is 27 inches wide, 49 tall, only eight inches deep. That is the home aid itself. The smart energy box, which is the gateway, the intelligence of the system, the electrical connectivity. Uh, Matt's gonna dive into some of that detail in just a little bit. <clears throat> but that's only 19 inches wide, 23 inches tall, and seven inches deep. So you've got a really low profile system compared to some other solutions on the market. You know, homeowners don't want all that equipment all over their wall. They do want more energy. They want more power but they just don't want all that stuff on the wall. So Homemate brings a nice low profile, aesthetically pleasing solution for those discerning homeowners. We're gonna show you just a couple, you know, typical simple schematics to show you how the electrical architecture can be designed with the Homemate. You know, the first one there at the top, I don't know, Matt, it's labeled whole home backup. In this case, you can see the grids connected to the smart energy box, but what does that really mean, Matt? Well, thanks, Jim. Well, you know, with the smart energy box, you know, we're UL listed as service equipment. So in most markets, uh, we can connect right to the utility and, um, you know, have the uh, smart energy box with uh, any size main breaker of 100 to 200 amps, um, you know, become the service entrance point for the site. And, um, you know, we may have a partial home backup situation below. Um, you know, it really depends on site conditions, uh, everything in the home that uh, the homeowner is uh, wanting to back up. And, uh, you know, we can configure any number of ways, but uh, we can, uh, you know, connect to the utility or have a main panel in between the utility and the smart energy box as well. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. And I know that that whole home backup thing is, uh, those are words, but what we're showing you here is just simple architecture, electrical architecture of how the home aid can be connected. Uh, but, you know, let's take it another step, Matt. When we talk about whole home, homes, not all homes are created equal. They don't all have the same electrical needs. And let's just say an installer and a homeowner decide they want the smart energy box to be the service entrance. Therefore, the main service panel becomes the loads panel in this backup situation. How might we solve a whole home situation? Well, you know, one thing that uh, we can do is, and we haven't spoke to this, but, you know, with a single smart energy box, we can actually connect more than one battery. Uh, so I've seen cases where we've got two batteries, but uh, we've got uh, capability of up to four batteries. So our total energy storage, 57.6 kilowatt hours and uh, the inverter power stacks as well. So we've got a uh, possibility of up to 30 kilowatts of AC power uh, with one smart energy box. Perfect. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Appreciate that very much. So when it comes to whole home, no doubt, we want to go through that discovery process with the homeowners, understand what they really want. Well, we know what they want, don't we? They want to live normally until the power comes back on. But then we have to dig into what they really need and, of course, what fits in their budget. But, um, you know, if we do need to solve that whole home scenario, the smart energy box will handle a 200 amp service and up to four home eights can be connected, as Matt shared with us. <clears throat> we've also had some scenarios where um, we've deployed multiple smart energy boxes and multiple home aids to solve an even larger residential uh, service entrance. So lots of possibilities. And look, these are just sample schematics. One of the ways LG Electronics wants to be and is a better manufacturing partner is to work with you, the installer on pre-sale design. <clears throat> As you're exploring these options, these solutions with your homeowners, <clears throat> you know, you're gonna go through some preliminary electrical design yourself and try to figure out the best solution. This way you can present to the homeowner what their options are and, and make a decision. And, you know, uh, LG has had a recent experience that I want Matt to speak to and bring this particular illustration to life. Sure. Well, thanks, Jim. 
Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting, you know, uh, what we see out in the field. And, uh, you know, we might get a phone call, email, what that is. And so, uh, you know, it sounds to me like, um, you know, in this particular case, you know, the installer had a uh, opportunity for a very large system. And so I said, well, can you help us out? You know, kind of, you know, give us a sketch. You know, it doesn't have to be elaborate. And, uh, and that's what we got. We got a sketch. So, um, you know, based on, you know, what the uh, installer was looking for, what the homeowner was uh, looking for at the, at the site, uh, we were able to just kind of depict what that might look like here with our diagram. So, um, you know, we get into the higher technical details a little bit later, but uh, at least, you know, with this uh, caricature, um, you know, put it together and uh, and work with the installer and, and just kind of map out uh, really what they wanted and uh, be able to work on this thing together. Yeah, I love it, Matt. Thanks. Uh, and I have to say to our audience, the, the image on the left was actually a cleaned up version of the back of the napkin sketch that we got the first time. It was really fun to work through this one. Uh, and we love it when our installer partners just throw these ideas on paper, then clean it up on a notepad. And then Matt kind of makes sense of it for me so I can understand it in this caricature, if I will. Um, I, I love that reference, Matt, caricature. But what was really impressive and, and satisfying for me was to see the final line diagram that, that Matt and the installer collaborated on. I learn every time I look at one of those things. Uh, but that was really the, uh, the end game was to get to that line diagram, plan set ready and, and reach alignment on how we were gonna solve this particular backup situation. And uh, the good news is the installer won the project and we're looking forward to this installation here before the end of the year. So again, folks, just an example of how we want to work together, how we do work together, how we wanna help you be as successful as you can be with LG Electronics and the Home AESS as your partner company and product. Uh, just wanted to share that example with you. All right, couple little things here. They are little, but they're really big. Uh, we call it the magic. I call it the magic. I don't know. LG knows a thing or two about displays. So we put one in the smart energy box for you. It's a touch screen. It's the HMI. This little gem here allows you to set up, configure, and commission the Home 8 without an app, without a laptop, without the internet even. It's all done right here on the touch screen. It's a guided commissioning process. You can see on the top right, you get active feedback during the commissioning process. And then the homemade itself, the display at the bottom, shows you also what's going on in the large enclosure where the inverter and the batteries uh, exist. So these little magical pieces are really interesting, not only for the installer during setup and commissioning, but quite frankly, for the homeowner as well. That display on the homemade enclosure, uh, what you're seeing there in the image, is a percentage number, that's percent state of charge. So when things are normal, you see the tower to the left, that little icon is green, that means the grid is up. So 24% state of charge. And you see the little green icon at the bottom, that's the internet. So in this case, obviously the home, uh, the home eight's connected to the internet. When the grid goes down, the home eight will transition to backup mode with its built-in automatic transfer switch and that number on the homemade display will change to hours remaining at current load. So in the event the homeowner's internet is down, maybe the cellular is not working, maybe the app is uh, unresponsive, the homeowner can actually look at the homemade enclosure and see the state of affairs. And if they're load managing, they can go ahead and make some changes if they need to based on hours remaining at current load. So these little features help bring the magic of the home eight to life for both you, the installer, as well as the homeowner. I mentioned the app. Yes, of course, there's an app for that. So any customer that has an LG appliance is already familiar with the LG ThinQ app. All of the LG equipment resides in the app and homeowners can inter interact with those various pieces of equipment or appliances. The home eight is no exception. On the left, you'll see the home screen <clears throat> excuse me, we call that the energy wheel, solar at the top, battery left, grid right, home in the middle, and then the, the animation of the wheel shows how the energy is flowing at any given time. There's plenty of data points, plenty of uh, interrogation of energy usage in the home. Operating modes can be configured. Um, earlier in our talk, we 
we refer to time of use rates, California, North Carolina, others certainly to come. The Home 8 FinQ app allows the homeowner to tailor those settings per their utility rate schedules. There's also an emergency ready mode on the left-hand side, for example, uh, in a, you know, I'd use North Carolina as an example earlier, uh, AccuWeather, severe weather alerts are paired with a home eight. And if the homeowner enables this emergency ready mode and chooses the appropriate severe weather alerts, the home eight will prepare itself for that impending weather event. And then I didn't outline it, but the next screen shows public safety power shutoffs these can happen, particularly in California. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're announced, they're scheduled. The homeowner can program those events into the home eight and it will prepare itself. So the homeowner has backup energy when that PSPS occurs. Uh, last, if, uh, if a homeowner wanted to input the price of their electricity, they can monetize all of the energy data within the app and see it in dollars and cents instead of kilowatts and kilowatt hours. Okay, let's have another poll question. Let's talk about installation. What are your biggest headaches with installing residential storage? And go ahead and pick three of these for us. Here they come. All right, you guys are great. Middle of the afternoon, at least on the East Coast, and everybody's eyes are open. You're answering questions. Love it. Thank you for that. All right. About half so far have responded. Looking good. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Okay, very good. So for these headaches, I'll just ask, um, you know, think about it. You can think about it out loud if you wish. <clears throat> we won't hear you, but feel free to think about it. Would you rather have an ice cap or a Labrador puppy? You get, you get to choose. Either one will help your headache, I guarantee it. All right, thanks for those answers. We appreciate it. With this particular slide, I'm going to hand it over to Matt. I want him to... Uh, to take you to inside the belly of the beast, show you what's going on inside the home eight. Yeah, where the magic happens. Thanks, Jim. So uh, on the left, uh, we'll see our smart energy box. And, um, you know, we like this uh, diagram because, uh, you know, it's a real unit, so you can actually see the main breaker installed there. Um, you know, we don't have to have a main breaker, but, uh, you know, if it's required, absolutely, as I said, anywhere from a 100 to a 200 amp. Uh, below the main breaker, we've got a set of what we call non-backup load lugs. So those are uh, for in cases of a large home or, you know, through, uh, you know, your uh, installer wanting to figure out, you know, the load management, um, you know, we can choose to not back up some loads. So we have that ability as well. On the uh, left, we've got you know, the backup load side. So we can have a backup load panel connected there. That's where our PV and our ESS connect. And above that, we can see the seven inch touchscreen HMI. So again, UL listed service equipment, NEMA 3R, actually both the home eight and then moving over to uh, in the middle here, the is also 3R rated. Uh, as you see, we've got the four battery modules and we've got the PCS, which, you know, this is our own inverter. This is made by LG Electronics. So we're uh, real proud of that. And um, of course, uh, you know, it's a high voltage system, so we have to have the four battery modules, but 15.8 uh, total kilowatt hours and 14.4 usable. And uh, we'll maybe get to that uh, detail in another slide here and kind of explain that for you guys. But uh, ample uh, wiring space to connect up the, uh, the home eight and uh, the communications cable, a very straightforward installation. Yeah, Matt, thanks for that. What's, so tell me more about the, the picture in the middle there. You said four battery modules. Can I get one with just two? 
No, uh, again, it's a high voltage system, so those things are connected in series. So. Okay, but but why four? Why not just one big one? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, you know, in order to uh, you know maneuver things, uh, each battery module is uh, fifty seven pounds. So uh, for installers, you know, you think about uh, you know the earlier slide that uh, Jim had up here. You know, we're looking at three hundred and fifty nine pounds. So if we can remove modules in the field, 57 pounds each, makes life a lot easier for installers. So two people can easily manage uh, you know, the rest of the unit that's uh, 130 pounds, really. Nice, excellent. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, appreciate that. What do you have next for us there, Matt? So moving along here, um, little bit uh, reference to the uh, last comment about, uh, you know, 15.8 kilowatt hours, right? That's a lot of energy, but, you know, the homeowner is going to see 14.4 of that. So in a case of a power outage, uh, something happens, the grid goes down, um, you know, they might use all that 14.4 up in time. So you know, we hope that never happens, but, uh, you know, we're kind of uh, designed to respond to that particular condition. So there's a lot of things that we can do, but uh, if the uh, state of charge gets to zero, you know, the home mate's going to go to sleep. And uh, till the grid comes up or the next morning, if we can uh, try to wake up, um, we're going to try to uh, find the... Uh, grid or we're going to try to maybe wake up that PV inverter that's connected the next morning. So this is all going to happen automatically. Every two hours, we're going to be looking for charging. And so by looking for charging, we're going to actually form a grid and try to wake up that PV inverter. And once the PV inverter wakes up, then we can charge from solar. If uh, by chance, uh, we have a two-day outage or the solar is just completely unavailable, um, get to the next day, we can actually black start the unit on our own. So the homeowner can actually has that capability after the second day to black start. And what does that mean? That means they've taken control of the situation. We don't have to have the installer come back and do anything. Love it. Love it. Thanks, Matt. That's cool. Great feature. So um, on the installer side, um, you know, Jim talked about ThinQ for the homeowner. The installer is empowered with uh, being able to use the interview uh, web-based app. And so this is an app that um, we use for fleet management. You can look at all systems. Uh, real similar to uh, other companies' monitoring portals that they have the ability to look at multiple systems. And then uh, we can uh, go into each system individually. And uh, it has a lot of great features. Uh, we can look at uh, what's going on on the PV side, the battery, the grid, uh, all those things at the same time. Uh, we can look in history and uh, we can just um, do any kind of uh, investigation. If there happens to be a question come up about the system, uh, we use this quite a bit, actually, because sometimes, you know, the homeowner doesn't quite understand everything completely, or maybe the installer didn't really understand what the homeowner was looking for. So a question comes up, and uh, this is a powerful tool uh, with our training, uh, helping you guys understand, you know, how to use this. Uh, we can get a lot of things done. Matt, that's a great high-level view there of the interview web platform. And you mentioned training. It's so part, uh, really, really important in this space. Let's take a quick poll question and just see what that means to our audience. Here we go. It's your turn again, audience. You guys are great. You're hanging in there with us. I appreciate it. Hands-on training. So Matt showed you the, while well, the answers are coming in here, Matt showed you the, 
the landing page, if you will, that interview installer monitoring portal. You can see your fleet of systems. You can see a single system. <clears throat> but again, that's just the landing page. And this hands-on training, this in-person hands-on training is super important to us. We want you to enjoy the simplicity of the system. We want you to get it right the first time so that your homeowners have a great experience and you maximize your productivity. Um, and there's additional certainly training that goes along with interview as well. Matt, you want to take just one more shot at that interview piece and just show them a little more detail? Sure, Jim. So as I mentioned, you know, you can individually look at, you know, the battery, the solar, the grid, energy use in the home. Uh, you, you can look at it uh, all together and actually see the solar coming up in the morning. If we look at, uh, let's take a look at the left side here. Um, we can see the production in yellow. And then we can also see in green, we're charging. So we're taking that solar resource as the solar morning begins and then start to charge the battery from solar. We can also see uh, you know, what gets exported to the grid as well. So we can do all these things kind of simultaneously as needed. Um, and we can actually see it in real time. We can see it here over history. So um, we can take a look at battery state of charge, uh, see how it ramps up over here on the right-hand side, gets up to 100% state of charge. When we use the battery, you can see that state of charge dropping. So we have a lot of capabilities uh, to do all these things. And uh, we'd like to help you guys, um, you know, be able to use these tools and, uh, you know, become better. Uh, that's what we'd like to do. Love it. Thank you, Matt. That's awesome. Let's jump into another quick poll question, taking us closer to our exit ramp here today. The LG ESS Pro Program was developed and rolled out for your benefit. Let us know what you think about it. Give us some answers here in the poll. They're coming in slow, Matt. <laughs> well, they're probably looking at this slide that you have there because you know I wasn't sure that HQ would let us release that. <laughs> Well, it, it is a tiny bit insightful of where we're going. That's right. We're going to make brain surgeons out of everybody, right, Matt? Right on. Yeah. All right, good stuff. We've got some good answers coming in. Thank you very much for your responses. We appreciate that. This is uh, the LG Pro program. Oh, hang on. Let me get there. The LG Pro program was designed, developed, and rolled out, again, for your benefit. We want to provide for you some assets to help you promote your business, promote your storage business, promote your partnership with LG, create some sales and marketing collateral, give you access to all the technical resources that we provide. And then uh, we also provide some online training as well. This is introductory training, as we've said, Hopefully enough during this webinar, we want to be your better manufacturing partner. Work with you personally. Hands-on training. When you call, we answer. When you email, we answer. Uh, we'd love to be in the field with you as well. So um, Matt is one of our applications engineers and working with not only that apps engineer team, but also tech support. Any comments about the training academy at this point? Sure, Jim. Well, you know, as you said, you know, we built this platform and it, it's always evolving, right? I mean, we're, uh, you know, we're here to help you guys, but, you know, it's not intended to be, you know, a platform that uh, you just kind of teach yourself. We're, we're always here to help. We're always making changes. Um, you know, we're looking at materials and, and learning from things out in the field that uh, really make life better for all of us. So, um, you know, bear with us, check it out, uh, give us uh, feedback. And, um, you know, again, it's uh, get better every day. Great. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, the, the LG ESS Pro program was born out of our prior experience. You know, we couldn't have done this at all without Betsy Summer. She's our marketing director. She was with LG Solar as well, and has just done a great job for us here 
developing and deploying this resource for you, our installer partner, uh, to just grab some assets quick and easy at no cost to you, uh, you, we encourage you to use them. Augment your own local and regional brand with the LG brand. Use the homemade uh, logos and imagery to, to help you promote, help your salespeople show what they say to their homeowner customers. It, it's a great landing zone for sales, marketing, and technical resources. And if you're not signed up, and I see several are not, I see some are asking what is the program, uh, we do have a simple LG Pro program flyer in our handout section that'll be deployed shortly. Feel free to grab that. And then uh, not only will you have my contact information at the end, but there's also a link there at the bottom of this slide. Uh, that would be your landing page to actually sign up for the LG Pro program. But look, let's have a conversation first. We'd be glad to talk to you more about LG Electronics, LG Home AESS and how this pro program can accelerate your success as well. All right, so we're at this point tidying up our webinar, but what does the look forward look like? It certainly is a journey in solar. If you think about the home, what is one way to do a better job with energy? Well, let's not lose what we use. So energy efficiency, think, attic insulation, windows, doors, weather stripping, uh, you know, energy efficiency improvements, any way that we can use energy better without losing it. Well, then there's solar. Let's generate our own juice. We have this space on the roof that's unused. Uh, if we're oriented correctly, we aren't shaded by those big things with leaves. If uh, the roof space accommodates a nice solar array, why not generate our own juice? Well, then there's the storage piece, because, for example, when the grid goes down, what happens to solar? It turns off. So now we add energy storage. We have energy security with solar generating our electricity. Now we have some energy insurance available. If the grid goes down, the energy is there if you need it in your energy storage solution. Another interesting avenue, a place we can together capture Another element of the business is adding energy storage to existing solar. So think about that as our economy changes, as you know, these economic and even global times change, those people out there with solar on the roof are already on this renewable energy journey. They're already on their energy security journey. So why not go back to them and talk to them about adding energy storage? The home eight being AC coupled is very easy to add to existing solar. We're here to help you get that done. No doubt, decarbonization is another word that we've heard used substantially in this whole journey that we're on. And finally, electrification. That is the latest buzzword and actual reality that's happening around all of us. But, you know, one thing I think about in electrification is who is paying attention to grid capability? It's a question I've heard asked a lot. But one of the ways that LG can help address our current grid capability, together with all of this electrification, is an ecosystem of high efficiency products that work together. And that is home appliances, heating, air conditioning, home energy storage, LG Electronics is the only company that can bring this ecosystem to bear on the markets around us. Not only do we provide that energy insurance through energy storage, but low and no load startup, heat pump inverter technology, low load burden operating, heating and cooling. Customers in the south want to be cool in the summer. Customers in the north want to be warm in the winter. I put this image up here just as a teaser of what's to come and LG Electronics is your partner that can bring it all to you. So stay tuned as more of this comes to light and to life. Uh, we look forward to taking this journey with all of you. With that, I'm going to go one more slide and say thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate you making time and staying with us for the full webinar. My contact and, and Matt's contact info are shown here. And a huge shout out thank you to our partner and friend, Green Tech Renewables, for hosting the webinar. 
and having us together today. And you'll see there in your sidebar, uh, the handouts are showing up there. Feel free to download the spec sheet, the unpacked flyer that Matt brought to life, and the LG Pro program flyer as well. Thanks, everybody. Thanks a lot, Jim. Thanks, Matt. You're quite welcome, Stuart, sure. and uh, appreciate everyone's time today. Okay, Stuart, do you want to hang for just a minute in case we want to respond to some of these questions? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay. Handouts are in the handouts tab. That's an easy one. Notice I took the easy one first. The hard questions go to Matt. <laughs> okay. Question about components and acronyms. Unless I know what specifically we're asking about. Um, I answer think, that. Yeah, I think one might. So one thing that came up for me was the VPP capabilities. Sure. Um, can you okay. explain that? Maybe explain that a little bit more for people who are in areas with VPP programs. Sure. Yeah. The it is it is a acronym that's been thrown around a lot lately, especially virtual power plant is what it's called. And there's nothing virtual about it. To be honest with you, it's interesting how that maybe it's virtual for the utility, but there's nothing virtual about it. It is a power plant having a a residential energy storage system installed behind the meter is a little power plant. But you know, in, in normal terms, it just sits there until it's needed. But what's happening in this VPP environment is that utilities are tapping into that stored energy during peak periods. Think summertime, think late afternoon for three or four hours. And they're dispatching that stored energy when the homeowner doesn't need it. And they're incentivizing the homeowner to do so. So uh, that's the, the simple nature of these power plants behind the meter. It helps utilities offset, you know, those peak demand periods where they're typically required to fire up peak generation or buy electricity at peak rates to supply that increasing demand. Why not tap this stationary storage resource uh, that's readily available? These programs operate, they're, they're functioning today, and they are growing across the country. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Do, do you know of any, do you, are, are you currently set up to operate directly with any utilities or third-party VPP like aggregators? Do you know? Yes, um, <clears throat> we're nearing completion. Honestly, we're, yeah, we're nearing completion launching with two particular entities. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are two programs in the Northeast that will be enabled on here within another couple of months. So the answer is yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If there's a specific if there's a specific interest in a specific market, they're very welcome to to reach out to me directly. Happy to talk about it. Great. And I'm sure you'll let us know or or the relevant uh, CED location when you do get qualified with those entities. Absolutely. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. yep absolutely. Yeah. There's a so there was a question, Matt, about your uh, fancy design slide. That big system. The question there is, how did you get to 10 batteries on that system when we can only put four on an SE box? <laughs> well, uh, thanks. Somebody was uh, paying attention. Somebody was paying attention, right? So, um, yeah, there's uh, multiple SE boxes in this particular configuration. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, one SE box can have four home eights. So in this particular case with 10 home eights, we have five smart energy boxes. And, and of course, this is a unique site. This is not your neighbor's, uh, you know, 200 amp service. Uh, this is a unique situation with, uh, you know, multiple sub panels out of a, a very large uh, single phase service. Got it. Thanks, Matt. There was a question about sharing the slides. Um, everyone registered will receive a link to this presentation. It has been recorded. And again, the handouts are available for you to, to download. Uh, so you'll, you'll have access to the presentation. Um, there's one I want to grab here too, Jim, about the state of charge being equal to zero and the grid forming comment. Okay. Um, Thank you, so, Matt. So, yeah. So based on the uh, the total capacity of the home at 15.8 
kilowatt hours. We say 14.4 of that is usable. So there's a delta there, right? And so that's what keeps us alive. Uh, we've got, you know, that reserve energy capacity, you know, roughly, you know, nine to 10 percent of the total capacity of that battery is there. And the homeowner won't see that. This is just for our installers to understand. But, um, you know, zero on the display to the homeowner equals about nine percent. So uh, that's our, uh, our keep alive. And uh, that's what we use to uh, form a grid. Uh, and uh, when we switch into the microgrid mode to try to wake up that PV inverter to get it going when there's no grid. Great. Yeah, excellent. That's, that's a fair question. Thanks, Matt. Great answer. I appreciate that. Hey, I see another one here that we get often, and I really appreciate someone asking this one. The difference between LG Electronics and LG Energy Solution. Great question. We get Again, we get it often. LG is a very large global entity. Um, you may remember LG Chem, and it still exists. That is one particular silo of the global business. LG Electronics is another particular silo of the business. LG Chem, as part of their business, made batteries, and they still do, but they carved out that battery business into their own identity called LG Energy Solution. That company exists. They still make batteries, um, but they're different than LG Electronics. It's a different silo, if you will, under the LG Global banner. And so we're very different businesses. LG Electronics brings to the table this Home 8 uh, energy storage system made by LG Electronics. LG Energy Solution continues to manufacture batteries. I hope that helps. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, I see another question up here on the screen. Um, so um, we're compatible with uh, any PV inverter. Um, the question was with reference to a solar edge inverter. Um, no, uh, we AC couple with basically everybody. We've got systems with micro inverters, string inverters, uh, you name it. So, you know, as long as the inverter is a frequency watt capable inverter, which they're all required to be these days, um, not a problem at all. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I think honestly think that question was related to uh, the LG Energy Solution battery that's out there on the market. So being AC couple again, this is a system. It's the, the the smart energy box, the gateway, the intelligence of the system, the inverter, and the battery modules, a, a complete system. So uh, all we want to see is the AC juice from the solar inverter. We're, we're happy to take any of it. Matt, I'm going to have to defer to you. There was a question earlier about acronyms, and here's one I don't know. Can I avoid MPUs using your PCS? Uh, main panel upgrade, I think, is uh, you know what they're looking for. Okay. So yeah, in in certain cases, um, you know, it uh, it really depends on um, you know the market. But uh, you know, we're uh, right now uh, getting our PCS certification uh, taken care of. So uh, you know, bear with us just a little bit, and uh, we'll be able to. Uh, have that functionality uh, 100%. Okay. Uh, here's another good one. Are LG Electronics and Energy Solutions compatible with ex existing solar sol uh, systems? I think it. I think we've already answered this one, but I'll, I'll be specific. LG Electronics, LG Home AESS, is compatible with existing solar for sure. We just take the AC output from the solar inverter. Okay, just a reminder, the handouts were, were specifically presented. The slides will come as a link to the recorded session. Uh, uh, I Matt, see a, you want to, go ahead. <laughs> well, I just see a question about a breaker size. So, breaker to tie into the system, I, I guess I'd kind of, I, I could maybe just kind of go over a couple of things real quickly here. So the homemade itself, uh, that lands on a 40 amp breaker inside the SE box. Um, if we have like, for example, a 7.6 PV inverter, that would also land in a 40 amp breaker inside the SE box. 
Um, if we're doing a whole home backup, uh, we would have a main breaker inside the SE box, and that can be anywhere from a 100 to a 200. So uh, hopefully that will answer your question. If not, um, you've got our email. Shoot it over. We'll help you. Matt, can we use just any breaker? That's a great question, Jim. So um, we need to use Eaton BR breakers in our panel board. And uh, for the main breakers, um, we can actually use either a CSR or a BW for that uh, main breaker. But only right. Eaton breakers, even though the other guys fit, um, you know, we got to refer back to NEC Article 110 and, uh, you know, adhere with, uh, you know, what's been tested and used and documented for installation of the product. Sure. Good. Good. Uh, Matt, this is an important one too. I, I mean, we've, we've got quite a few people hanging on. We're just four minutes from the top of the hour, but I think we can tidy this up quickly with two last questions. One is um, battery chemistry. Can you please discuss battery chemistry? So, you know, we're, we're lithium ion and it is NMC. So, um, you know, we've been that way for a long time. Um, you know, we're, uh, you know, certified 9540A tested. Um, we're very confident about safety of the battery and the construction of the battery modules. Um, but it is it is NMC. And so we're just like every other NMC in terms of temperature capabilities, uh, and those kinds of things, charging, discharging, uh, very similar. But yeah. um, the 9540A testing that we have is, uh, is a very good document. Yep. Thanks for that, Matt. I appreciate it. And you, you touched on part of another question. That was the temperature range. If you downloaded the spec sheet from the handouts, you can see the temperature range is recommended as well as operating uh, on that spec sheet. But, you know, the thing to remember is it's a battery. There, there's nothing. It's a battery. And so just like your cell phone battery, it's susceptible to heat and cold. But that those specific uh, temperature range data are shown on the spec sheet. I want to add too to what Matt said about NMC. LG Electronics chose this chemistry for energy density. Remember, homeowners don't want all these boxes on their wall. They want more energy in a smaller space. And so we chose the NMC chemistry, but LG Electronics also takes safety very seriously. And we let UL tell us, much like so many other things in the home are UL listed, we let UL tell us through their testing, 9548 for system safety, I'm sorry, 9540 for system safety and 9540A test for battery safety. And UL has blessed the system for use in, in a residence. So we're very satisfied with the, the battery module design that mitigates risk. And UL's testing showed us that um, the home aid is, is named appropriately. It's suitable for your home. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in. Oh, you know what? There's one more, Matt. We're just, we got a minute to go. Let's wrap this one quickly. Uh, there's a question about a load calculator. And the quick answer to that is not yet. So bear with us on that. The, the load calculation, particularly in the spirit of this LG electrification ecosystem is coming. Got to bear with us. There's a little more to it. But I know there's a lot of calculators out there, fairly generic but I understand how it's a useful tool when helping set expectations with homeowners. Um, we're working on it. Bear with us. Yeah. And, and let us know because we'd be happy to have a great conversation with you and help you, you know, come up with the right sizing of the system based on, you know, what your client's looking for. So reach out and let us help. Sounds good. Stuart, that's the end of the questions. Uh, I'll say it once again. Thank you so much. Thank you to Green Tech Renewables. Matt, thank you for making time to join us as well. And for those folks that are still on the line, there's quite a few actually, and I appreciate you hanging with us. Thank you for making time in your day to be with us. Thank you guys too. It's a great feature set. I'm really looking forward to uh, turning my design team loose with some of these. Terrific, Stuart. Thank you so much.